BCA. <laughs> British criminal apprehension? I must have turned to the BBC channel by mistake. I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I find nothing more attractive, yeah, than a well-dressed body. Yeah, I do. I do. No. Well, now BCA in our title actually stands for. There we go. I get my laser pointer here again too. Clip absorb up uh, beyond clip absorption. Yeah, it's about time, huh, that we got rid of that? Well, in actuality, we still have some of the same formats we'll be using here. Yes, we will do our warm up, which is our introduction uh, to the clip we will be playing. Then, of course, we will play the clip. And then we'll do a warm down, uh, talking about the highlights, doing some extra enlightenment, and always done with a smile. Uh, now, some of you may, you know, be asking, hey, Glenn, what was the reason for those two long ace absorption vlogs? I mean, really, what was the... Naughty, naughty, how, how could you, really, I, actually, I heard it from the grapevine, okay, specifically the grapevine was our content manager, Heather, uh, said, hey, you know, maybe you should do a cumulative vlogs uh, on, on our lessons for clarification, and, uh, uh, it's a good idea because we are always trying to build those foundational blocks to bulge our bridge prowess. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And fortunately, we do have enough live footage to support that. Uh, but, you know, just for fun. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, what's the name of that animated character who spouted those words? Okay, uh, we got some, the character, not the actor. Okay, in fact, the actor. Here's the hint, Steve Carell. Or is it Carell or Carell? Okay, it's got a rail on there somewhere. Anyway, uh, he's the voice behind that character who we're trying to find. And then the, well, that animated character was bold, bold well... He was bold, but he also was bald. He also had no hair. Uh, and uh, that character's subordinates were yellow. And me, well, that was in the title of the animated movie. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Um, now, if you do not have it, if you do have it, go ahead and go below our comment section, actually not below our comment section, below this vlog in our comment section, and go ahead and place the answer there. And if you still don't have it, uh, we will have the very last slide. I think we'll kind of give it away. Uh, but don't fast forward to the last slide. Let's forge ahead together to have some more fun regarding what we shared in those clips absorptions. Here we go. Let's get it together, but we're going to do this very briefly just to go over it real quick. Uh, hierarchy. Organizing hierarchy. Yeah, okay. It's organized in our hands, that are or cards that are in our hand. The suits being spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. And we also organize an alphanumeric from ace being the highest down to two, which is the lowest. Cool. Now, what, uh, what, what is a trick? What a trick is? Well, when each player puts one card of a particular suit being played at that time, whoever has the highest card of that suit wins. Yay, team! Okay, lucky 13. 
is being aware that 13 is a lucky, lucky number, excuse me, when we are aware that how many cards are, are in each player's hand, how many cards are in an each suit, and how many tricks are in each hand. Well, once we realize that, we also realize that that number 13 is a lucky number. Okay, win, lose, demeanor. Hey, we can always win. No, we can't. We can't always win. And we can't always lose. But we can always still have fun with friends and family, colleagues, etc. Whatever the results are, just fluff it off and go on to the next one. Hi, Lo. If we can win a trick, we go with a high card. Doesn't specifically need the highest card, but at least a high card that will win that trick. If we can't win the trick, hey, get rid of the lowest card. Makes sense, right? Inflatable wrench. Okay, well, this is, well, the dealer has the first choice in picking which suit they would like to be that wild suit card. Okay, and now that goes along with trump cards, which is synonymous with wild suit cards from the inflatable wrench. Uh, let's give an example here. If diamonds are the wild suit card, aka trump card, and the first card laid down in the round is a heart, and you don't have a heart. No heart. All hollow. Okay, you're hollow. You don't have a heart. But what you do have is a diamond, and you can trump it with that diamond. That diamond for it's wild. Isn't that wild? <laughs> and isn't that a cool trick for your team? Yay, team! Trickster cards. Specifically, tricksterCards.com. Well, it gives, not comms, tricksterCards.com gives us the opportunity to take these concepts we've learned and put them into practice online. Uh, let's go down to the lower. Okay, so this was clip absorption, the first one. This is clip absorption, the second one. HCP stands for high card points. Ace is four points. King is three points. Queen is two points, and Jack is one point. Okay, and T. We decipher this acronym. Yes, Kitty, as no trump. NT is no trump. We know that trump cards are synonymous with the wild suit card chosen for a hand. Well, no trump means there will be no wild suit cards in that particular hand. All the suits are equal. And the determination of winning a trick? Strictly alphanumeric, going back to that from the highest A to the lowest two. Highest card wins the trick. Bidum hierarchy. That goes with our little tune that we heard in clip absorption to and T spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. This hierarchy will become even more important to us when we dive into the points. Uh, okay, uh, that's coming later right, in a vlog near you. Now, it sounds important, I know, but just take it in stride. Don't stress about it for right now. We're still doing our building foundational bridge blocks. You will know soon. The last one here we got is our ladder to NT. <laughs> okay, we want to give clues to our partner what suits we are strong in, but we also want to know what they are strong in. If we go to the top of the rung and go for a major suit, as the major suits are the spades and the hearts, you know, uh, we're not giving much room for our partner to actually show us what they have. Uh, so therefore, when possible, when starting, starting off to bid, 
hit those minor ones right here, the clubs and the diamonds. Diamonds. <laughs> the diamonds. And this way you can kind of go up the ladder to reach top dog of NT. Okay. Question, question. Why, oh, why, Glenn, are you synopsizing, I don't know if that's a word, but synopsizing clip absorption one and clip absorption two for us? Well, three reasons. <laughs> to give you a quick overview before we continue on. To make sure you understand the concepts, yeah before we continue on. If you are confused about any of the concepts, uh, please seek a psychiatrist. <laughs> Actually, it will be beneficial for you to go back to clip absorption one and clip absorption two before continuing if you are confused. Okay, well, let's continue on by going well, through... Well, we definitely got the clear clarification on the first bidder. It is not necessarily the dealer. The dealer has the first option to bid. But, hey, you know what? It can be passed uh, to the left, to north here, to make a decision. Well, you know... Maybe North doesn't really have a, that good of a hand, so they're going to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to pass over to East. And then East now has the option to be the first bidder. You know what, I don't like my hand either. I'm going to go ahead and give it to South. Yeah, give it to South. <laughs> and now South becomes the first bidder. So... We got here that the first bidder is not necessarily the dealer. For they can pass the opportunity. Here we have West as the dealer. They can pass that opportunity to the North, who ended up passing the East and end up going finally down to the South. They, there's that number one, they end up being the first dealer. Or I should say, the giving the opportunity to be the first bidder. Now, for our die-hard terminologists, yes, first bidder is also known as the opening bidder. Uh, Trick-taking games, well, we took some liberties and decided, hey, the first person that bids is the first bidder. But our orthodox bridge players may not appreciate the alteration. My apologies. Okay, HC. P. What is HCP? Okay. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I think actually... Yeah, I love that little twinkle. HCP high card points. Now, many may say, hey, you need to have that golden 12 or 13 HCPs before you can actually bid. Don't disobey it. Forget about it. 12 or 13, you know, it's not always black and white. Some fuzzy, furry, calico colors can be introduced into it as well. Uh, 12 or 13, it's a rule. But trust me, it's a rule that can be broken. Mm -hmm. And the rule of 20 gives you some legitimacy in doing so. Now, there is a financial rule of 20. For our stockbrokers out there, don't get too excited. My apologies. The rule of 20 we'll be going over today is related to bidding gain, not financial gain. What is the rule of 20 and when can it be used? Well, this can be answered by our content manager. Hi, this is Trick Taking Games talking to Marjorie Butler. Marjorie, um, tell us about your affiliation with Bridge and your title, etc. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm a member of Bridge Unit 547, which is Ventura County. 
Comedy in California, and I've uh, been playing bridge for since, uh, let's see, 2010, so that'd be like 13 years. Um, right now I, I play, and also I'm a president. Ooh. She's the president. I had to stop at that. <laughs> okay, now our content manager, Heather, who, who resembles our stepmom as well. Uh, anyway, hey, she's got a good one here. No schlep like me. Marjorie Butler is the president of Ventura Unit Bridge Club number 547. Okay, this, that's all odd. I realize it. But basically, it's affiliated with a nationwide organization called the ACBL, which is the American Contract Bridge League. And hey, that's been around since 1937. So hey, uh, we got some juice here. Continue, Heather. As you know, our followers from Trick Taking Game, they're newbies and novices. So we wanted to ask you two questions. And that is, what is the rule of 20? And when do you use the rule of 20? Okay. Um, the rule of 20 is a way of deciding whether or not to open with what you have in your hand. Ooh. You probably know if you've been playing some bridge. Uh, you get your cards and you count the points, uh, eight to four, and et cetera. And then if it adds up to 12 high card points, then you would want to open that hand because it's strong enough. But if it only adds up to, say, 10 or 11 high card points, you still might be able to open that hand depending on the distribution. And so if you add the number of high card points and then plus the number of cards in your two longest suits, and if that adds up to 20, then that hand is good enough to open probably. Our kitty cat saying, yeah, they need to open up that bed. That rule of 20 is going to help them out quite a bit. <laughs> oh, well, Marjorie gave it to us straight. Uh, the rule of 20, uh, HCP plus the two longest suits in our hand. We count the amount of cards right there. Awesome. We like that. And it's the opening bidder. Okay. The person really who has the first option to bid. Uh, we call them first bidders, uh, and but traditionally, Bridge calls it the opening bidder. I like that. Now, uh, how about if we show, well, like an example slide regarding what La Presidenta Marjorie shared with us. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, as we see here, the gravity here is the dealer. Okay. So they get the first option to bid. Again, first bidder, synonymous with opening bidder. And as they hovered, hoovered, hovered, hoover, hover, hovered <laughs> above here, you can see here that this is something that Trickster Cars does give us hints here if we want them. Uh, we, it telling us basically, hey, we if you have three plus diamonds, usually four plus, which we have one, two, three, four. Okay, if you have no five card majors, here we have our majors again are spades and hearts. We only got one heart. Uh, uh, we don't need to play back that clip again. Yes, thank you. We appreciate that, Kitty. And uh, so we got one, two, three, four. So we don't have five. We just have four. Cool. Okay. Uh, 13 to 21 points. We got 12 points. Uh, we don't have enough points. And yes, uh, now, uh, La Presidenta Marjorie had mentioned uh, 12 points. And so, like us, we had said before, there are some who say 12, some people say 13. TricksterCars.com goes by the 13 criteria here. Uh, but the rule of 20 comes, in fact, here and says, hey, take your number, your HCP number, and add it to your two longest suits. Well, we have actually all the longest suits we have are all in four categories here. I mean, four. So we'll just take clubs and so we got one, two, three, four. 
plus 1, 2, 3, 4. That equals 8. 8 plus 12. Hey! Exacto mundo. That comes out to 20. Now, I think it might be nice for us to... What about some live action on some of this? Yes, you're right, Kitty. Our visual bliss hand... Well... It's his title. Let's go for it. It takes four clicks to enter into the visual bliss hand. <laughs> hey, to get to the promised land, we, we go to Trickster Cards. Well, specifically, TricksterCards.com. Now, if you haven't signed up for this free site, you will see above here, yeah, I put a little clue here that, hey, it's rectangular black and it says, Lasses Fair. After viewing this vlog, uh, rewind back to that laissez faire. <laughs> and upon that click, it will take you to that video, vlog, excuse me. And within that tutorial, it's a step by step on how to sign up. Okay, hey, let's get back to the four click visual bliss hand. First click, bridge, bam. Awesome. Next click, practice. Bam! And now we want more games and rules. Bam! Here we go. Okay, so uh, I would say you first kind of want to start off, make it easy on yourself. Let's go four hands. That ends up being a hand for each or around. Each person gets to deal once. And there we go. Honors, bonus, you always want to keep the bonuses. Uh, review, I think that's important to see our review. Uh, so we should keep that. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and tell you exactly what I know what this is. Okay, so um, it's supposed to be used in join and practice games only. So let's go ahead and... This is practice, so we're going to go ahead and upload that. Best hand to me? No, nah, no. Nah. Let's just get whatever hand they give to us. Uh, allow suggestions. I like this, and especially for us newbies and novices, if we're a little bit lost or if we just kind of want a better clue, that really helps out. Show all hands. Now, a lot of times I have told or informed, excuse me, the people who first start playing to go ahead and do show all hands. For those who've already been playing, I think it's time to not show the hands. Now, time to bid, you're going to see this very important when we when we show uh, the, the uh, visual bliss hand. Uh, time to bid, I like to keep on off. And also time to play to keep off. And the reason is because... As you can see here, they got 7 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. 60 seconds is the max if you try to choose those seconds. Uh, I like to say off so you can contemplate a little bit more. And you will see that as we continue. And our very last BAM is great. BAM! <laughs> I went a little BAM crazy there, didn't I? And I'm sorry, you didn't even get to hear that lovely sound of the cards being dealt. Okay, so, uh, well, you know, here we see that uh, Trickster Cards is giving us that suggestion, as we can see up here. I'm just going to point here. Gives us that one diamond suggestion. I love that, that they actually end up doing that for us. And, uh, oh, you know, uh, just to point out to get everyone, we got people's names, Sharon, Gravity, and wait, just so you have that. Okay, so that's showing the one the one diamond and what we need to follow. And at that point, gravity is saying, okay, we only have, we have actually seven diamonds. So we, we fulfill that. And also what they are pointing out to, uh, which it did go over very quick here, is that did we have five uh, card major? And we did not. Uh, majors being, again, the spades and the hearts. And at this point, uh, clubs is by themselves in the sense of we're supposed to go black, red, black, red. 
but we've got no spades right now, so uh, uh, that's not going to work for us. So we got that in the factor, and uh, here we're going to go ahead and see, yes, you see out here we don't have the five cloud made. Now at this point, trying to find out what else we need to know. Well, we don't have the 13 to 21 points. Do we have the rule of 20? Now, I do want to point out to point out to you that uh, I'm putting this back up here again. Uh, the reason being is this is what we chose. Uh, and I think the good thing about it is uh, you'll see it's going to take us about three minutes uh, for gravity to make a decision. And it's nice to have that. If it was 60 seconds, it would have been gone by now. And just so you know, when it is gone, what happens is the computer will make the choice for you. Uh, and I think most likely the computer would just go ahead and choose the one diamond, whatever it has suggested. Uh, but as we can see, he's adding up the longest suits, uh, which he's got the spades, uh, got, I'm sorry, he's got the diamonds, got the hearts, and, realize, and then he goes, <laughs> he goes there and says, you know, could I do two diamonds? And it really says here that he could, because it has five to 11 HC points. But gravity decides, you know what? I'm going with the one diamond. And uh, because it just really makes a lot of sense. And here we got two hearts. Yeah. And again, now it comes to making a decision. So interesting, it has time to bid, which we have off here, and time to play, which we have off here. So we do not, are, aren't there in the restraints. Uh, he's looking at the hearts. He's looking at the spades as my bid, the three diamond. Also, he's trying to see if he can get any suggestions, which I think is great. This is something that we can learn Let's go and see what the computer says if, if we are able to, you know, three hearts. And what three hearts? Because, hey, got four hearts here, but 16 to 21 points. Uh, rule of 20 does not apply here and does not apply there as well. So that's, that's the decision that has to be made. And he's looked at that double. That's going to be an important thing. We'll explain that later on uh, because he's thinking, you know, wait a minute. Three diamonds, that makes no sense because you got seven diamonds here. That that double and his partner has spades, but he has absolutely no spades. He can't support giving him a three spader here. Uh, so it really came down that that was the only decision to make was to double down. Let's get double the points. Uh, and now it's time to lead here. And as we're going to lead, you can see here, they go ahead and put that, but he went for the ace of hearts, even though the, they wanted to have the four of clubs here. And again, they wanted to do four of clubs. Now, what we have here, he basically, gravity just wanted to get a trick. Uh, he's trying to set. Uh, and as we know, the contract being made is six plus three equals nine tricks. For us to upset that, we have to make sure they don't get nine tricks. We know there's 13 tricks in a hand. So we need to get five tricks so they can only get eight. That's at the least. Now at this point, it's counting the hearts. So one, two, three, four, five hearts, six, seven, eight, four have been played, 12. That means there's one more heart between Sharon and Wade. Who has that one last heart? Because what Gravity's looking for, hey, if I play my heart, can it be trumped by my partner or will it be trumped by Wade? I'm taking a chance here. I'm not really quite sure uh, because, you know, there was no support when, when uh, Becky had made that heart bid. So they're not sure how many Wades have, and we don't not sure how many Wade has in, in heart-wise. So this was, uh, it was kind of a tough decision, but wanted to try to get another trick and basically... Basically, it's just kind of going for a hope and a dream here that the one trick is held by, the one heart is held by Wade and that Sharon will actually be able to trump the card. Uh, doesn't know how many trump cards that uh, Sharon has, but hey, she has the queen or king, excuse me. And that, it's important again for us to count. Here we go. Uh, hey, they had to give up something here. 
And uh, they realize that there's the ace and they're giving up two. So we gave up two here. Up, Don't ignore, ignore, ignore that scorecard. We will go to that later. Uh, but okay, so they play the ace of clubs here. They're going to go ahead and get this trick as well. And now they they don't have much of a choice. Where they throw out, we got plenty to go ahead and uh, well, they actually don't have a heart. They couldn't have a heart because that was that uh, the last heart that Wade had. So we got the two of clubs contemplation. Yes, we want to beat theirs in case they played a diamond, but they didn't play a diamond. And now really from this point, we're deciding, you know, we want to exhaust their diamonds is what we want to do. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. You'll see this. We'll go one more round. Oh, we got rid of that jack of diamonds. Nice. And neither west or east has any more diamonds. And as we look at this hand, it's easy to see, as you can see, the, the jack, it doesn't really matter. We're going to have to give up two tricks here no matter what. Uh, but we could have probably just out of curiosity. In fact, I'll, I'll show it at the very end because we got the 10 and the 7 here too. We have the ace of spades here we see. Okay. So I was just kind of curious on that a little bit. Uh, and I think maybe that's what gravity was contemplating about. You know, maybe I should have played those diamonds first. And I'm going to, well, we're going to pause here for a second. But now I'm supposed to claim this. And it does. But there you can see this. there was a spade here and that. And, and again, ignore, 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 ignore. Uh, I put a cross, and you'll visually have to kind of put it back in your mind in the sense that South had an ace of spades, okay? And they had two low spades. And I guess the question here is when we had when we had the three uh, diamonds left, if we would have played those diamonds instead of the hearts, would have East and West got rid of their spades. And if they did get rid of their spades, then we would have maybe had an opportunity to get one more. It's possible. Who knows? Again, it is all complete speculation. <laughs> It really is. But hey, you got to enjoy the uh, visual bliss hand. And, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and just kind of talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I think it's just kind of very important that we do this. And, uh, you know, we will see that. Yeah, we can see this now. It's actually much better. Uh, because before when we we're playing live, you couldn't keep this up because they were trying to make a decision at the same time. And uh, they were counting how many they had. But basically, let's go through it. So there was three diamonds, usually plus four. They had seven. They had no five-card major, as we spoke about before. It would either be spades, but there's no spades here, or hearts. And they had four. Okay, so they're good there. 13 to 21 points. Didn't have that. Had 11 points. 13 seems to be Trickster's golden rule criteria for HCP. The rule of 20, well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because we're, we're counting the long suits. That's 11 plus 21. We had 22. Uh, so, yeah, we hit that rule of 20, no problemo. Uh, now, betting that one diamond, I think, to con a little conjecture here, uh, I think really kind of set the tone on the results of what happened here. And, uh, you know, I, yeah. Because <laughs> it does make you kind of question uh, in the sense of, why they want us to go one HCP, one diamond, maybe not going the two diamonds originally. And it does have me kind of question that a little bit. Uh, um, there was enough time to contemplate, as we saw here. 
And if we had gone the two diamonds, would have Wade gone three diamonds? I don't know, but the outcome ended up being pretty good as well here. And uh, yeah, so, but as we can see, this is where we stood, okay? This is exactly where we stood here. And if it didn't go for the one diamond here, uh, like I said, it set the tone to the point to where they went two hearts, and we'll soon see why they went two hearts. They went two spades, and we'll soon see why they went two spades. And going three diamonds, you know, I have to, you know, wonder about this, and it's the reason why we went double. Yeah, it was the reason why we went double. And actually, there should be a question mark here. Why'd they go three diamonds? Uh, and, it, it, you know, we can kind of do a little speculation here uh, on, on this if we want. Uh, and, and so, anyway, uh, they did the diamonds. We doubled down to try to get some points because we double dare. We double dog dare you that you can get those diamonds. <laughs> we do. And... The question here is, you know, you know, if we do sabotage or set them, we end up getting double, double the points. But if West East fulfills their three, they also would get double the points. And so anyway, but we will cover points later. We won't be doing that. But let's let's go over the results. OK. Uh, yes, <laughs> the double dog dare you did come through there. Um, so as we look over the results here, and it shows here seven tricks. Okay, and then we have this claim button. And the reason why this claim button is up here from Trickster Cards is because there's two Trump cards, wild suit cards left, and North and South happen to have that. So they're actually going to get nine tricks uh, on, on this as, as well. And so in no form or fashion did uh, East and West come, tr come close to that. Uh, yeah, they were supposed to get, as we know, the six trick threshold plus the three diamonds equals nine tricks. I put contraction. <laughs> That sounds kind of weird. Uh, they got contractions. No, their, their contract is to get nine tricks. And actually, the funny thing is that North and South end up getting the nine tricks. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's just go to, sort of analyze this a, a, a little bit and, and go back into here. So now we actually get to see the bidding process. And at the same time, why? Okay, so we already knew the reason why gravity went with the one diamond. Two hearts here, one, two, three, four, five, six. They had six hearts, so that two heart bid was really good. Now, two spades, one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, six spades, two spades was a good bid. Now, three diamonds, you're going, well, that's a mystery. This guy had two diamonds. I mean, yeah, he's got one alpha here, but eesh, gosh, that's kind of weak. Uh, really, at that point, South said, there's just no way you got that diamond. I'm going to double down. Now, this is all speculation, you know, uh, in the sense here that we think that East was trying to bid verbally because uh, you know, we can't we can't verbally communicate with people but you can bid verbally with people and by putting this three diamonds I think they were basically trying to put across to them saying I'm communicating to you that I want you to bid three hearts I want you to up 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 this to three hearts now, that's just some speculation. Uh, that's a lot to chew on. I mean, I mean, really, Glenn, I, I mean, you know, we can question it all day long if that was the reason why. 
yeah, I can't talk to him. So I have it's a bot. I have no idea. And it's a lot to chew on. You're right. You're right. We are looking at how to pronounce this informal exclamation used to express disbelief or exasperation. Sheesh. Sheesh. As in, sheesh. Really? Sheesh. <laughs> well, sheesh. Yeah, Glenn. I mean, that's a bunch. That's 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 a lot. That's a lot of brunch to to be gnawing on, uh, but I did like his deep voice, so I just had to bring that in. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot more the way he explained the, the sheesh. I will hope it's a more calming expression of what we just went over. But a lot of times when you do see something happen, and the bots will do this, you see a three of diamonds where there shouldn't have been a three of diamonds. A lot of times they are trying sheesh. Uh, trying to make a nonverbal bid communication for their partner to up their bid to their strong hand. And that's basically what they were saying. Also saying, we do have some support here. We don't have any alphas here. And we didn't want to go three hearts because we didn't want you to go to four hearts. So it's you know, it's a communication that if bridge players or, or teammates been playing for quite a long time, that they would understand that. Uh, you know, but I, I think we will continue with that sheesh equation in another vlog uh, regarding this nonverbal communication. Uh, but let's let's yeah, hey, let's go ahead and surmise what we spoke about today. Okay. Well, hey. We finally got beyond the clip absorption vlogs. Uh, and we learned that... Uh, I like the little twinkle. That 12 or 13 is not an ironclad golden rule. It's a guideline. That we learned that, you know, the 12 or 13, you know, the rule of 20, uh, hey... It's a bid allowance with HCP plus card amounts and two largest suits. So we got to see that with the diamonds in the sense that that portion, uh, they had a, gravity had 11 HCP points. Also had 11, 11 cards in the two largest suits, giving them 22. So they were well within doing that one diamond and I'm telling you, we'll talk about later, but they got mucho points for making that one big decision. And when can it be used? Okay, well, the opening bidder is to be a, gets the opportunity of using that rule of 20. And we got to get that from, well, we learned that from an audio interviewer, content manager, Heather Thornton, with our interviewee, uh, La Presidenta Marjorie uh, gave us a clarity of that rule of 20. Thank you so much, uh, Marjorie. We do appreciate that. And we also got to put those wise words from Marjorie uh, into tricksters.com online. And so what we would like you, well, we, we, we have a suggested challenge. Uh, go on to trickstercards.com. And go with the, without the BAM, because I went crazy with the BAMs, but go with your four-click Visual Bliss hands get to get to that Visual Bliss hands, which is click Bridge when you go on to TricksterCards.com, then click Practice, click More Games and Rules. That way you get to choose. You get to choose that we had here. Rubber, because that's contracting, which we're normally used to playing. We did four deals. In other words, we got four hands. That means each player gets to deal once. Uh, we got to play the bonuses. Uh, we, get, we got the review, which you got to see. We just went over the review. And we didn't know what quite that was, but it said, hey, if you do join or practice, go ahead and put that in. Uh, we got to allow suggestions that helped us out in doing that one diamond bid. And off and off for bid and play, that helped us quite a bit uh, in making a decision, which it took three minutes for Gravity to make that first open bid decision. 
And now you get to see the create button uh, that we get to click <laughs> for the last one before you go in because I cut it off on the other one. Uh, but hey, uh, I think we got a lot out of this. And, uh, you know, really, go out. Please work on your bridge foundation. And, you know, uh, put some fun into implementing the rule of 20 wherever you can when you're playing online. And next week, we will reference back into the ebook Bridge Be Boring. So dust it off and prime yourself up as we learn how to... Finesse. Did he get this? <laughs> yeah, finesse our way around the bridge table during brunch and bridge and when we're playing online. Hey, uh, finesse, did he get this? We get little French culture enrichment at the same time as we are learning. Okay, so now we are going to go back and, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, peek at our last <laughs> earlier quiz uh, question that we had. Uh, and hey, if you, if you have already guessed the character, great. Put it in the comments. If you haven't, probably. Well, if you haven't, the next slide, well, I believe we'll probably give it away. Have fun by participating. Leave a comment. And really, thank you so much for viewing today. Please click subscribe and click on the way out. It helps our channel and hopefully... It's your channel in growing and giving you content that's valuable. Ah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Kevin, Mina do it. Speak up. <laughs> Mina do it, Mina do it. Speak up. <laughs>